What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be reacting to crossing the world famous Pont Casilta Canal Aqueduct in Wells. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate. I actually went on to Google looking for the correct pronunciation for this word and all I could come up with really were a bunch of computer generated versions of this word and how you pronounce it. And the best version I could come up with was Pont Casilta. I think that's pretty close, but considering this is a Welsh word, I'm sure I may be off a little bit on the pronunciation, but I'm definitely closer to pronouncing that correctly than I was when I first saw the word. It definitely looks a little bit different uh, to me than how I think it's actually pronounced, which is Pont Casilta. But anyways, guys, um, I'm really excited about today's video. This will actually be the second canal video I've seen. I checked out a my first British canal was probably about two months ago, and that was the longest, deepest canal in the UK. Um, that video was awesome, and it really got me excited, not only to continue to explore other canals throughout the UK, but also learning a little bit more about narrow boats. I have no experience with canals or narrow boats. You know, in the US, I've never lived near any canals and I don't know if I've ever actually seen a canal in person. I may have seen canals on TV or something like that, but I don't really remember it. And I've also never really seen or been on a narrow boat. So both of these topics really fascinate me. Anyways, guys, I don't really know what to expect here, but this looks like this is going to be a very interesting video. So let's just go ahead and dive in and check out the Pont Casilta Canal Aqueduct. Hello and welcome to the vlog. After my planning vlog, I had quite a lot of inquiries from people saying, are you going to go to Wales? Are you going to do the Langothlan Canal and go over the Pont Casilta Aqueduct? Wow. And the answer to that How is, tall is that? this year, no, I'm not. However, I am today at Trevor Basin near Langothlan on the Langothlan Canal to go over the aqueduct, but not in my boat. I'm supposed to be joining Kath and Anna from the Narrowboat Experience, and I know they said to meet them here, but where's their boat? That's not it. It's the wrong colour. Everyone knows theirs is red and says Ewart on the side. That said, this one does look vaguely familiar somehow. Surely, surely it can't be. I know. Let's just step aboard and see who's there. <laughs> oh, look. It is Kath and Anna. Hello! Hello. Look, we have a spare cup of tea, coincidentally. We did not know you were coming. Nonsense, of course, and I did know they'd repainted, really. Just high jinks. Tea consumed, we're ready to go, and Kath dispatches Anna. You've got to get to the end, come on! Anna's going to check the aqueduct is clear for our travel, and we'll phone back with news. Meanwhile, Kath's fired up the engine and loosened the bow lines, the boat drifting out, so she had to crab back along the... So, before the last video, I had never seen or ever heard of narrow boats at all. You know, maybe it's because there are no, well, I'm sure there are canals in the US, but I've never been around any canals or seen any canals really. Um, but it makes me wonder, are narrow boat boats built specifically for canals? Is that like literally what they're built for? And another question I had just thought of is like, so obviously you can't turn a narrow boat around. So I guess, I guess there's, in canals, it's like one-way traffic for a period of time, and then they basically allow the, the traffic from the opposite direction to come through. But where do you turn around? Like, if you want to go the opposite direction, is there some sort of really wide opening somewhere on these canals that you can turn around? Because otherwise, or maybe, or as a canal, or as a narrow boat, does it have the ability to drive? in both directions. I bet that's what it is. I hadn't even thought about that. Anyways, let's continue. Tunnels while I watched and laughed. I get the distinct impression that me pointing the camera at her every move is not helping, but she's a master mariner and everything's in hand. Or is it? What haven't we done? This happens all the time. 
Yes, we were adrift and the tiller arm was not yet attached. I do that all the time as well, to be fair. Well, Anna's gone ahead to check that there are no boats coming over the aqueduct at the same time, because it is one way. Uh, meanwhile, Kath is ably manning the tiller and engine to take us off the mooring out of the little Trevor Basin and we do a sharp left to go over the aqueduct. It was a little tricky to get off due to an overhanging boat on the next mooring spot, but with a little toing and froing, the skipper soon had us underway. What is this? There's a little and rather tight bridge to get out. What is that little pole that she's holding on to that she just attached? What exactly does that do? Does that actually does that actually control the motor and make the boat go, or does that steer? I couldn't tell she had a steering wheel there. I'm not really sure. But another question I had is, how deep is the average canal like this? Um, it just doesn't look like it would be that deep, but I'm guessing it's probably deeper than I would expect. Out of the basin, negotiated by Kath with not so much as a touch of the sides. Oh man, height is definitely limited, wow. Then this is very tight, due to the oh, hire wow. boat firm having most of its craft tied up for winter, leaving the tiniest sliver of a gap to oh, squeeze wow, through. Oh wow, dude. That takes some skill to drive through there, I'm guessing, man. Wow, that is really tight. You could barely get a sheet of paper between the boats, wow. but we're not touching. So that makes me wonder, are all the narrow boats and the exact finally, same width? out of Trevor Basin Otherwise, and doing the left turn immediately onto the Pont Casilti Aqueduct. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to get every boat through there. Built from 1795 to 1805 by engineers Thomas Telford and William Jessop, the aqueduct uses 18 cast iron spans on hollow masonry piers to wow. cross the Dee Valley at a height of 126 feet. Man, that's beautiful, dude. Can you imagine building that that long ago? That's impressive, man. The canal is carried for over a thousand feet in a cast iron trough that's 12 feet wide and just over five feet deep. Oh, wow. The aqueduct was classified as a World Heritage Site in 2009 and is Grade 1 listed. It's the longest aqueduct in Britain and the highest canal aqueduct in the world. It's been in continuous use for 200 years and now it's our turn to cross. That's crazy, dude. 200 years. Yes. That really is a sheer drop off the side of the trough <laughs> with nothing to stop you going over. Man. The edge is slightly lower than the boat gunnels. In this health and safety conscious day and age, it is quite remarkable that this survives as is. Let me just show you what it's like standing on the back of a cruiser stern. There's the deck and there's the drop. Oh, wow. <laughs> You do get a fantastic view over yeah, the River D. Beautiful area, man. There's a towpath with railings, so you can walk over if you like. You don't have to have a boat. That's cool. You don't even need to steer, really. The boat could be guided through by the iron trough. But Kath's not one to give in that easily. Total professionalism here, steering a true course. Okay, she is dead as steering. The Canal and River Trust tell me no boaters have fallen over the edge, but you do get paddle boarders going across in high winds, which they're trying to stop. Wait, what? Oh, 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 okay. Sadly, there have been fatalities from the towpath side. See the link in the video description for a recent tragedy. Hmm, I wonder what happens on that side. Wow, man. That's a beautiful, be a beautiful area to go hiking. Wow. 
But what's this? Another boat trying to come the other way. The trouble is you can't see from that end whether anything's coming until you're practically on the aqueduct. Time to check in with Captain Kath. Hey Kath, how's it going? Good, yes. Any problems? No. I'm just unsure what the boat in front of us is doing. That's crazy. You can just have like a. You come across, come together Anna with a boat. Anna filmed the vlog too, of course, and there is a link to that in the video description. And yes, she's holding tight, as was I. Don't worry, Mum. I was very safe. What you tend to get on the aqueduct is little convoys, and sure enough, there's another boat following us. Emerging the other side, it's a bit tight, but just space to squeeze past that waiting boat. Wow. And as the ladies have run their water tank dry, an immediate stop at the tap to refill. This should take, oh, half an hour or so. 17 hours. What? Kath, what have we just discovered about how the water no. tap works? Tell the viewers what we've just discovered. Well, the thing was, I can't... The thing was, so I had it, that was full. See how it stops naturally there, I'm pushing it. Uh-huh. And I didn't want to break the tap, so I did do this a little bit. Uh-huh. And then nothing happened. How but... much faster does the water go if you actually turn it? Look, that's, you have to apply that's some considerable <laughs> pressure to get it to go the whole way. Never mind. Never mind indeed. Look at that awesome paint job done by Kath and Anna themselves, outdoors with a tin of hammerite and lots of steely determination. Beautiful. Onwards we went, through a lift bridge which they made me open as penance for taking the mick. Then I had a go at steering their boat as we went past canal side houses and moored boats. Oh, dude, this is beautiful, man. Like, really, man. So peaceful. Wow. That's just so idyllic right there. It really is. Finally, some history with yet more lime kilns, as seen in last week's vlog. After that, we moored up went for a very late lunch, and then the day was over. Well, that's definitely one ticked off the canal bucket list. It is an amazing structure. If you get the chance, do come here and have a go yourself. That's it for now. Cheerio. Guys, this place is awesome. I would absolutely love to... Where, I'm trying to find a picture. Where did that picture at? I don't know where it went. There it is. That's insane, man. To think this this aqueduct is 200 years old, man. I mean, the skill it took to build this 200 years ago, is, that's amazing. Wow. I, I, I can say people that are scared of heights might want to be careful when they go across something like that, but I would absolutely love it. I'm, I'm actually... I'm actually got a little bit of a fear of heights myself, but I've always tried to face them. And something like this, I'd be fine on, but uh, it would be it'd be wild. It would be wild. But what a beautiful view and great experience. And it looks like you're. I would just love this. I would love to 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 ride on these canals. And uh, this would definitely be one that I'd like to uh, check out in person. But this whole area, man. I mean, I would love to go and ride through the canals in this area and just kind of. You know, it seems very peaceful, and this would definitely be a little bit of an adventure. And then I would like to somehow get off around here and go for a hike because I saw a trail down here. Like I said, you can walk across here, but this looks like just a, just such a beautiful area. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Um, it just it'd be be amazing, but um, I think it'd be really cool to be one of those people that live full time on the narrow boats and just be able to just drive around these canals like this. And, uh, well, I said drive, but I don't know, float around. What would you call that? I guess just boat around, I guess is what you would call it. Um, 
you know, I don't have a ton of boating experience, a little bit on lakes and whatnot, um, you know, and I've been on in the ocean on boats a couple of times, but nothing major, um, you know, um, but this would be, it would be a blast. Um, I think it would just be such an adventure. It's, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me because I, I do remember in the comments of the previous video, people talking about people actually live on these boats full time and they, and they travel up and down these canals all over the country, right? And I don't know how many miles of canals there are, but maybe hundreds, if I'm not mistaken, hundreds of miles of canals. And obviously they go all over the place and you can see so much of the countryside, you know, that way and just be a great way to travel. Probably a little bit slower because I think these narrow boats are limited on speed, but um, it kind of reminds me of the people who live in RVs in America and travel around in RVs. What a free, what a freeing lifestyle, you know. My wife and I actually thought about doing that at one point, but, uh, you know, we have a four-year-old. Uh, you can do it, but it's just, it's definitely a little bit different and uh, yeah, a little bit harder, you know, with the space lim limitations and whatnot, but I think it would be so fun to do something like this. Definitely got to come by and do the canal narrowboat experience uh, when I'm in the UK, and I'm hoping I could come and do this one. Obviously, it doesn't last a long time. How long are you on here for five minutes, maybe? But it'd be a really cool experience. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.